wasn't really feeling it and I wanted to see how it was for myself. Unfrosted is one of the worst movies of this year. What is up everyone? It is Epitaxic Joshua. If you are returning or if you're new here, welcome to the channel. My name is Joshua Drake. I talk movies, TV, music, and anime on a few occasions with the last two. And I am an autistic YouTuber. So, we're here to talk about um, Unfrosted. Unfrosted is a, the latest Netflix comedy. This is directed by Jerry Seinfeld. It is also written by him and four co-writers. This stars Jerry Seinfeld, Melissa McCarthy, Hugh Grant, Jeff Gavigan, and Max Greenfield, and so many other people to name. From Peter Dickwitz, Christian Slater, to James Marston, to Bobby Monaghan, Tony Hill, to Sergio the Entertainer, to John Hamm, to Kyle Dunnigan, Maria Bakalova, and so many other people. In the post-1963, Kellogg's and Post's sworn serial rivals race to create a pastry that will chase the face of breakfast forever. I have some curiosity to it because I am a big fan of Poe's cereal and I do like Kellogg's cereal. The movie about a rivalry sounded really interesting. Unfortunately, a lot happened here. And I saw some people weren't really feeling it and I wanted to see how it was for myself. Unfrosted is one of the worst movies of this year. It didn't piss me off as much as Madam Web or Founders Day, but there's just one problem when it comes to this movie. This movie is not funny. The big thing that a comedy is supposed to do is to make me laugh. I was sitting here for 97 minutes. You have all these characters and all these stories that you want to tell. I respect the fact that Jerry Seinfeld, he wanted to make a movie for himself and with his friends. He's even said things like how the crazy society we live in is killed comedy and some things you can't get away with today, which I, he's not wrong because s sensitivity is kind of killed comedy, especially comedy movies, which is why it's so hard for anyone to make a fucking comedy nowadays. The biggest problem, this is just a painfully boring film. This is 97 minutes, and for a comedy about Kellogg's and Post and their rivalry trying to create the Pop-Tarts or something, you actually feel like they actually make fun of it and even go meta with it. There's moments where they do try to go meta with it with some of the cereal brands and stuff they have, but the problem is, I'm sitting there watching this movie. This was on Netflix, by the way, which I watched this through an alternative. There was moments I was sitting here, I was not laughing, I was not enjoying myself, and I was not having the best time with this movie. There was moments where some of the comedy, there was a few moments I actually laughed at and actually put a smile on my face with some of the characters that they have in here. I as will say the cinematography in this movie is actually pretty decent as well and I will say Jerry Garfield does direct pretty competently here. I'll give him that. But it has so many talented actors in here that are just wasted on a script like this. And he wrote this with four other writers. None of the jokes were funny for the most part. A lot of the time the self-meta commentary and such that they try to go it feels like the anti-version of Air, and I haven't seen Air, but I've heard that movie was great, so I'm actually kind of want to check it out. But it seriously frustrates me. You have Netflix, a streaming service who can do anything they want, and you have so much money out there, and you have an annoying habit of just greenlighting some of the worst things ever. I can't speak for Rebel Moon or things like that because that I haven't seen yet. But between this and some other movie decisions you made, not many people have been happy with. Now, there are some movies I actually will like from Netflix. There's and TV shows. But the problem that Netflix has, they have this 
whole mentality of we'll just green light anything we see. How about you take a fucking look at the scripts and just say, what the hell, we're not doing that to so things like this. I'll say it's colorful, it's very colorful. I appreciate the colors there. I really do enjoy that. And some people will look at this and they'll have a good time for 97 minutes, but that's fine. But when you have all of these different stories like the spies at post and then the head of the post company and then you have Mark, then you have the USSR to secure rights to the Cuban sugar and you have all this Shakespearean and Tony Tiger's crap in this movie and I'm not laughing at it I'm gonna have issues with this my your number one job in a fucking movie is to make me laugh that's your number one job seriously what the fuck are you doing and I'm sitting there not really enjoying this here and not only that, like I said, so many great actors you have. Jim, Jerry Seinfeld, Jim Gaffigan, Max Greenfield, Hugh Grant, who, I will say, to credit to him, he shows up. He commits to his crowd. Melissa McCarthy, Peter Dinklage, Christian Slater, Bill Burr, Dan Le Levi, James Morrison, Jack McBrayer, Thomas Lennon, Mikey Day, Sarah Cooper, Kyle Mooney, Kyle Dunnigan, Cedric the Entertainer. Great comedian, what is he doing here? Maria Bacalosa, Patrick Warburton, fucking, there's so many actors in this movie is wasted here. Even Rachel Harris is wasted. But if all of that wasn't bad enough, I will say the biggest frustrator for me, yes, she's been talked about a lot and there's a reason that she's talked about in a, not a very nice ways for, for one reason or the other Amy Schumer how many times do I have to say this Amy Schumer is not fucking funny she's not funny I've never found her funny the only thing I ever fucking laughed to her in was train wreck and that was because she was absolutely competently handled, handled with the writing and that didn't help Snatch was not that funny. Oh, uh, everything else I've seen of her, Amy Schumer is just not that funny. And not to, and she still wants to go around saying she's a victim of stuff. No, was from what I hear, she is more not what she says she is. Especially with some of the racial behavior or something. I'm sorry, you're not funny. Stop. You, I I give you credit for making a living off of this, but if you're not making people laugh, it's including me. You're not funny. I'm sorry. And the pacing of this movie. I'll say the pacing of this movie is so obnoxious. This pacing is as slow as a snail's pace. I, I couldn't make this shit up. I couldn't make this shit up if I tried. I'm sad that I lack the talent to make this shit up. Nothing was happening. Nothing was going on. The only times I was ever invested is when the rivalry between Kellogg's and Post Serial was going on because that was the few moments that actually got chuckles out of me. Again, I give Jerry Seinfeld credit for wanting to make a movie for himself. But you also have to know what audience are you catering to, especially your long time fan. At the end of the day, I don't feel like talking about this movie for another minute and a half. There is almost the only good things I can say good about this movie is the cinematography, some of the cast is trying, and the story was interesting for the most part. And I will say the directing is good. And I appreciate that Jerry Seinfeld wanted to make a movie for himself and not for the critics. But if we're, I'm not laughing, if I'm sitting here for 97 minutes as well as other people, you're going to hear us complain about it. Some people actually do like this movie, and that's fine. This was just not funny. It, so a lot of the comedy was unfunny and boring. This is a waste of what could have been a good biopic, and it did not come together for me. Not to mention, the pacing was bland here, slow as a junkyard dog, and Amy Schumer, she's just not funny. Please, do, do not stop putting her in, my, in movies I... I want I'm interested in or I've seen stop if you are a fan of Jerry Seinfeld you may like this more than me if you're a fan of 
Kellogg's and pop and post cereal you may actually kind of get some enjoyment out of it but for this me this did not work whatsoever and easily this is not only one of my least favorite comedies here this is also my, so far of the only three movies i've watched this year to make this list this is the the sort of the worst movie of 2024 and there i still have seven more six more to put in this list we'll see what that be coming to end of this year and i do have some catch up this is just a disappointing effort well that's gonna do it for the video that you just watched if you want to see more my channel icon is up here if you want to see more content from me all my social medias are right here in this end card i will also leave a playlist and a video here for you to see what the channel is about as always acknowledge me stay epitastic join the epitastinist and you guys keep it cool